Welcome, welcome folks. We are looking at the domain and range of functions and we'll specifically focus in on the domain of polynomial rational and radical functions here. Uh, but before we do that I want to review domain and range graphically from a function. I think it's worth pointing out that I don't think that this is a uh, uh, exhaustive topic so this will not be an exhaustive topic and I'm not even going to define uh, domain or range in this video so I just wanted to point that out. And instead, I'd like to maybe look at uh, identifying the domain and range from a graph in a way that maybe you haven't done before. So, as a reminder, the domain of a function can be thought of as the collection of all x-coordinates on the graph of this function. So, for example, uh, if I were to take this point that's on the graph of this function, this would have some order pair, x, comma, y. But we can see that if I were to project this plane down, here's my x-axis right here, if I were to project this plane or this line down into the x-axis, this point, this x-coordinate right here, corresponds to that point. So one way you could imagine this is if you were to take this entire graph and you were to smash it, the blue lines that I've drawn here, if you were to smash this graph onto the x-axis, everything that has a point smashed onto it is part of the domain. So likewise, if I were to project this point down, into the x-axis. That's part of the point. That's part of the domain, as with this point here. One thing to notice is that this point right here would not lead to a corresponding coordinate on the x-axis. And why is that? That's because x equals negative 6 is not in the domain of this function. So if I were to smash this whole graph down, this whole, just for this first uh, line segment, if I were to smash it down onto the x-axis, these would be the corresponding points that have uh, the corresponding uh, x-coordinates that relate to these points up here on the graph of the function. Okay. Likewise, if I were to take this coordinate right here and smash it down, that x comma y, if I were to smash it down here, that would give me a point on the graph. And if I were to smash all of these down, then we would end up with this collection of points right here. And let's see here, let's do one more example. If I were to take this point and smash it down, that gives me an x-coordinate right here on the x-axis. But let's see what's happening here. Now, technically, this open dot right here does not correspond to a point, an x-coordinate on the x-axis. So at this point right here, we don't have a corresponding domain range ordered pair. However, down here we do, this would, and so this does get filled in. So if I were to give the domain of this function. The domain of this function is going to be this collection of points all through here. Where there's actually no reason to actually put that dot right there, just as there's no reason to put that dot right there. However, it is uh, correct to put a closed dot right there because of this endpoint, because you always want to clarify to your reader, uh, did we include the endpoints or not of these intervals? Okay, so this was a little bit lengthy, and this was maybe a different way of discussing domain and range. And again, I'm talking about it slightly differently than it first gets introduced as a topic. But I just wanted to emphasize how we can use the graph of a function to identify the domain. So this collection of uh, red x-coordinates right here, that's the domain of the function. So one way I could represent the domain, let's see here, this is the function h. So the domain of function h here, I could represent an interval notation as going from minus infinity to minus 6. That's this first segment of the domain here, unioned with minus 4 to 0. That's this second segment right here, ending at this open dot right here, unioned with, I'll have to clear out my arrow. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Unioned with uh, this last segment, which is going to go from 0 to infinity. And so here we can identify the domain of this function by thinking about, again, the, the, the visualization is we're going to take this blue graph, which is sketched here, and we are going to um, smash it, the fancy word is projected onto the x-axis. And then any point on the blue curve corresponds to an x-coordinate on the x-axis, which is part of the domain. I think we should feel okay why you know these points were included, but what's often confusing is what happens at these uh, breaks in the graph, these potential breaks in the graph. And so one thing to notice here is that if I look up or down where my x-coordinate is 0, you can see there is no corresponding point 
on the graph of the function. So zero, right here on the x-axis, needs to be excluded from the domain, and that's what you see in this statement right here. Okay. The most confusing part of this graph is right here, what's going on right here. Well, it is true that this is not a point on the graph of the function. There is an ordered pair whose domain value is two. It's this ordered pair right here, two comma negative three, is an ordered pair on the graph of this function, which means two needs to be in the domain. So even though this does not correspond to a point, there is a point on the graph that has an x-coordinate of two. And so we did include two. Notice that two is included in this interval here. Okay, so let's try that again here. We're gonna now do this with the range of this function. So what I'd like to do now, let's see here, that's not drastically different. Let's go ahead here and we're going to now think about the range of the function. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this blue graph, which I've sketched, and we're going to compress it onto the y-axis. If I were to do so, we end up with this point right here. Uh, why do we do that? Because I have this whole collection of order pairs that have as a range value negative 3. So when I think about taking and smashing this graph onto the y-axis, the fancy phrase is projecting it onto the y-axis, I'm going to get um, this point right here, and I'll have an open dot right here, and then I will have all of these points included in the range. So pause the video and think about that for just a moment. So now what I'd like you to try to do is I'd like you to try to state the range of this function. And you're going to have a little bit of trouble with this arbitrary singleton point here. This is the first time you've had to deal with this. That's going to cause you a little bit of trouble, but give it a shot. So pause the video and write out the range. So folks, hopefully you wrote something down. I'm not looking for you to have mastered this topic, but hopefully you wrote something down because it's better to have a guess and then find out whether it's right or wrong than to guess nothing at all. So here I'll go ahead and write out the range of this function. Now, I don't expect you to have known this because I don't think you usually encounter this in your college algebra class, but here I have the uh, range value negative three. That's because all of these ordered pairs along here had as their y coordinates, for example, there's the uh, order pair 3, negative 3, and there's the order pair uh, 3, negative 4, uh, excuse me, 4, negative 3. Clean that up. 4, negative 3. So all of these points along here have as their y coordinate, negative 3. So negative 3 is surely included in the domain. So then the question I have for you is how are we going to represent this singleton point here? And I'm going to do it this way. This is how math people agree to represent a sig singleton point. Now if you thought that you should have written it as negative 3 like that, that's actually a really good guess. And you're not wrong for thinking that, it's just that conventionally we've just all agreed that we're going to represent the domain of a singleton point this way. Then we see if I were to project the rest of this graph, so taking all of these ordered pairs along here on the graph of this function, all of these ordered pairs, and thinking about smashing them, projecting them onto the y-axis right here, projecting them onto the y-axis, it would be this collection of points. Okay? Something worth mentioning is that notice that there is no y-coordinate on the graph of this function of 2. Nowhere on the graph of this function do I have a y-coordinate of 2. If you were to look at all these ordered pairs here, none of them have a y-coordinate of 2. One thing that's potentially confusing, and it's a little bit hard to see here because I've since covered it up, let me clean it out, is that it is true that right here I, I have the ordered pair 0, uh, 3, or I have this hole here at 0, 3. So 3 is not, in, this point is not included on the graph of this function. However, if you look over here, do you see this point right here? What would be the coordinates on this? I'm not exactly sure what the x coordinate is, but the y coordinate is. 3. And if I were to project this point onto the y-axis, I do end up filling in that dot right there. And so 3 is included in the range of this function. And that's a little bit challenging. And you've not dealt with questions potentially this hard before. And so I'm, I'm, that's why I'm going through it slowly and trying to point out where this could be a source of confusion here because you haven't done that. Okay, so here we've got the range. And if I were to just give an interval notation this range right here, we would go with the singleton point negative 3. That's a little strange, but we talked about that. And then we would pick up the range values from y equals 2 to y equals infinity. Careful here, folks. 
When I'm talking about the domain, I'm talking about the collection of x coordinates that I have on this x axis here. When I'm talking about the range, I'm talking about this collection of y coordinates that I have on the y axis here. So, what I would like you all to do is I'd like you to try this example here, and uh, I will include a solution key to it, and then I will see you in the uh, next video for question four and beyond.